years or so. Demonstrates that the change in species is from lower flowers to higher. No Despite the obvious worsening breakdown crisis of the Eurozone and what that means for triggering a transatlantic and global financial meltdown, leading figures on both sides of the Atlantic have been paralyzed by their own stupidity. In the face of a world financial crisis and the possibility of thermonuclear war erupting over the breakdown of the British Wall Street-centered financial system, stopping to read a trend line to figure out where the situation is heading is a death sentence. As Linda LaRue said on this website over the weekend, if the recent trends in policymaking continue, then civilization is in danger, a dark age is available, and perhaps also the danger of a general thermonuclear war. On the other side, if we at LaRouche Pack and our international co-thinkers are successful in changing trends and shaping decisions being made, that could give civilization a chance of making it. So just as the coming political changes in Europe will have shock effects in the United States, a sudden change in the United States trend will reverberate back across the Atlantic for better or for worse. Take the international fight for Glass-Steagall which has broken out in the United States, Germany, Italy, and France. Thinking policymakers internationally are now considering the fact that without Glass-Steagall severing the private bank debts from legitimate government obligations, the economies of the transatlantic will not survive. To continue the trend after four years of bailouts, skyrocketing unemployment, and a net decline in the physical economic output means we are staring down the barrel of hyperinflation. The mere fact, as it's been reported, that the majority of European banks are leveraged 26 to 1 and that the European Central Bank is leveraged an incredible 36 to 1 is itself a death knell. For a little perspective, Lehman Brothers was only 30 to 1. Yet, foolish members of the British colony known as the Eurozone are choosing the path of doom insisting that Europe submit beyond the EFSF bailout mechanism and into the ESM permanent bailout fund. Helga Zepp-Larouche, chairwoman of the Buza party and champion of German national sovereignty, explained exactly what the ESM bailout fund is about and what it would mean for the last remnants of European national sovereignty. Uh, it's basically the idea to replace the previous bailout mechanisms, uh, you know, which had bailed out Greece and, and Italy and, and, and Ireland and whatnot, uh, to replace all of that with a permanent bailout mechanism. And, um, you know, this would then have a, a governor, governor's board, which would be the finance ministers, uh, working together with a directorate, which would be uh, non-elected people. You would have a supranational structure, uh, this directorate, which would be immune from legal prosecution, uh, their wages, uh, the height of their wages would not be known. Uh, they never could be, uh, uh, you know, investigated by any state attorney. So even if this thing would be completely clean at this point, uh, one of the Italian uh, citizens' initiative who is fighting against it, has recently made the correct point that this is like a complete invitation to the mafia because if you have an area which is a complete lawless realm, uh, if the mafia is not yet in there, then they say, oh, fine, because these uh, directors would have the right, for example, to go on the primary and secondary markets to speculate with the funds of the ESM, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for maximum profitability. So, you know, if they would commit fraud, if they would commit uh, stupidity, if they are incompetent, nothing of that could be investigated. And, you know, it, 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 it's opening up, uh, you know, Europe for the, for the vultures uh, uh, completely. Now, this is an insane policy and combined with the so-called debt break, uh, which would be uh, the idea of riding the debt break, uh, i.e. a balanced budget, 
in all constitutions. It's the worst combination. It would combine uh, austerity policy in the tradition of Brüning from the early 30s in Germany, uh, you know, with, with mm -hmm. totally depressive uh, effects on the real economy, with the limitless ability of this directorate to demand from the, uh, from the households, from the budgets of the member states, unlimited resources at any moment without the ability of national parliaments to oppose it or even national governments to oppose it. So this is a complete atrocity. And, uh, you know, uh, I think everybody who is in their right mind understands that the combination of brutal austerity plus uh, money pumping into the banking sector uh, causing hyperinflation is the worst combination and it would mean the death of Europe if it gets through. On top of the brutal stripping of national sovereignty from the states of Europe, add the matter of whether the ESM could even work. You start to look at the timetable of when the supposed 800 billion euro ESM fund is intended to be available and you suddenly realize 200 billion has already been spent, 400 billion won't be available until 2013, leaving just 200 billion available for this year. Now, I'm not a genius, but apparently neither are these guys. Now, all of that could happen only if each of the governments of Europe ratify the ESM, which is up in the air. And meanwhile, the IMF will be holding their spring meeting this weekend to try to beggar 500 billion dollars from member nations to attempt to contain the euro crisis as the ESM has yet to be ratified. So far, Japan has offered to pitch in 60 billion dollars and Great Britain is mustering a whopping 10. But Ibero America, Russia, China, the United States, even Brazil said they wouldn't be on board to cough up more bailout money. So with only 70 billion dollars promised, the IMF has decided to lower their fundraising goals to just 400 billion. This mountain of financial dynamite is only waiting for the right detonator, and Spain may just be that. In February and March, Spanish banks alone borrowed 50% of all the euro low interest lending from the European Central Bank window. And just after the Spanish banks were borrowing from the ECB, Spain's benchmark 10-year bonds were being sold at over 6% yield last week, an impossible level. The Spanish population is facing 24% unemployment, two and a half times the entire European average, with 50% of Spain's youth unemployed. Now how well do you think those people are going to take the austerity cuts that come with the bailouts? Now the debt that is getting bailed out is not the government debt of Spain, it's private bank debt, the Rothschild Banco Santander most emphatically. According to published reports, Spanish government debt compared to GDP is over 60%. But the debt of the private banks compared to GDP is 300%. Therefore, Glass-Steagall. If the governments of Europe are freed from their obligations to the private banks, the crisis is still really bad, but it's manageable. If they honor those debts, the governments will disintegrate. But saying we're going to let the European private banks go means there has to be Glass-Steagall protection on both sides of the Atlantic. That's the long and short of it. Their world is coming to an end. Nothing they have been trying over four years has worked, and to top it off, Europe's finance ministers can't even do basic math. So you're left with two options. Continue that trend and go to hell, or make a new one. In the United States, our renewed fight for Glass-Steagall is the fight for the construction of the WAPA 21. Only through that kind of economic renaissance can the public credit be restored and value put back in our financial system. What you can do in this fight to break the current downward trend is join us. Call our national headquarters, contribute, sign on to the Alpac weekly email list, get involved. Power to change the present trend, 
rests in our will to do so. So don't sit back. Join us to make it happen.